And there came a time known as the third millennium, a time when the people of the earth were ravaged by disease, pestilence, and poisons, a time when the horsemen of the apocalypse ran the multinational corporations, a time when America's citizens were waking up to a future of no money and no jobs. A time when a special man came forward, a man that your American taskmasters did not want you to see or hear, a man whom they took prisoner and hid away, a man whose name is Yahweh Ben Yahweh. For telling people the truth, Yahweh Ben Yahweh was taken prisoner by the minions of darkness. For giving people hope, Yahweh Ben Yahweh was led away to Golgotha. This is the continuing story of the past and of the future, about good and about evil, about your life and what it will become. A story that tells why the so-called black man of America had to suffer for over 400 years. A story of what will happen to the so-called black man if he returns to the laws, statutes, judgments, and commandments of God, you hey wav hey. Olam, Olam shall, shall you hey wav hey. hey. The universe, the universe of, of you hey wav hey. 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 Brought, Brought to you, to you by, by the nation, nation of you hey wav hey. Wav hey. Working for you and your future. Good or evil, life or death, this is your choice in this, the year 6002, the year of judgment. Shalom and a welcome to the universe of Yahweh. My name is Josiah Israel and I am your host. For over seven years now, we have been discussing some of the things the Bible said would occur in the day of judgment. We warned you that the weather was going to change and that the powerful forces of nature were going to bring terrible destruction upon America and the world and that it was going to get worse and worse and worse, and it has. We alerted you that violence in the public schools was going to increase, and it has. We showed you in the scriptures that forewarned of wickedness in high places and we are witnessing today gross misconduct and serious crimes being committed by some of our highest elected officials. What lies ahead for America and the world is nothing less than the proliferation of deadly diseases and plagues as foretold in the Bible. But there is hope. The Bible tells us that at the end the Messiah would be revealed and at that time he would save the righteous from this impending destruction. That one, the Messiah, is Yahweh Ben Yahweh. So we invite you to join us in the universe of Yahweh, featuring the commandments of Yahweh and the Messiah revealed. First, the commandments of Yahweh. For 6,000 years, we have been suffering at the hands of rulers who transgress the laws of yud heh wav -Heh and teach all people throughout the earth to transgress the laws of yud heh wav -Heh. In order to have peace, love, and harmony upon the earth, we must return to keeping the commandments, judgments, laws, and statutes of yud heh wav -Heh. All of us have been taught that the commandments, judgments, Laws and statutes in the Old Testament Bible do not count today. In this series, we will show you that the commandments, judgments, laws, and statutes in the Old Testament Bible do count, and that if we govern our lives according to these commandments, judgments, laws, and statutes of God yud heh wav -Heh, then we will have peace and goodwill upon the earth forever.
We invite you to study along with us. However, in order to do so, you must have the following tools. A King James Version of the Bible, several dictionaries, the New Strong's Exhaustive Concordance, a set of encyclopedias, Hebrew and Greek lexicons, a thesaurus, and a synonym finder. Shalom. My name is Ben Kayo Bethel Yishraya. We are discussing the commandments of Yahweh, and we are dispelling one of the world's greatest myths, and that is the commandments were first given to Moses. We are showing you that the commandments were not given to Moses first, but rather to Adam in the Garden of Eden over 6,000 years ago, which was before Moses. The first direct commandment that Yahweh ever gave to man was given to Adam. And that first commandment was to dress the Garden of Eden. We have been discussing dress with respect to observing the seventh day as the Sabbath of Yahweh. We have learned that no work is to be done on the seventh day, the Sabbath of Yahweh. Last week, we read Mark chapter 15, verse 42, and learned that the day before the Sabbath is the preparation day. Preparation was defined as the action or process of getting ready for some occasion. We told you that ready is equivalent to organize, and that the word organize means to make plans or arrange for. Thus, since no work is to be done on the Sabbath day, Yahweh commanded Adam, his descendants, and all the families of the earth to make plans or to arrange for all of our personal needs for the seventh day beforehand. Exodus chapter 16, verses 22 and 23 affirmed that on the sixth day, which is also called the day of preparation, we are to bake and seethe twice as much of that which we will eat. And that which remaineth, we are to lay up for ourselves to be kept until the morning, the seventh day. Baked was defined as to cook by dry heat in an oven, under coals, or on heated metals or stones. Seeth was defined as to cook by boiling or simmering. Thus, on the sixth day, we are to cook twice as much of all foods which require cooking by dry heat in an oven, under coals, or on heated metals or stones, and any cooking to be done by boiling or simmering. We also told you that we must gather and prepare for all of our personal needs, such as clothing, in advance of the Sabbath. These things are done so that on the seventh day, the Sabbath of Yahweh, Adam, his descendants, and all families of the earth can devote exclusive honor to Yahweh for all his marvelous work, his creation, which he, Yahweh, created and made. Today, we will continue our discussion of dress in connection with Adam, his descendants, and all families of the earth observing the seventh day as the Sabbath of Yahweh. We told you that Yahweh commanded Adam to keep and to teach the whole world to conform to as law the observance of the seventh day as a day of rest from our normal activity of daily work and to devote this entire day to reflecting exclusively upon the memory of Him, Yahweh, for all His work, His creation, which He, Yahweh, created and made. If we keep the Sabbath from polluting it 
and keep our hands from doing any evil on the seventh day, the Sabbath of Yahweh. Yahweh promised us that he would bless us according to Isaiah chapter 56, verse 2, which reads in part, Blessed is the man that doeth this, that keepeth the Sabbath from polluting it, and keepeth his hand from doing any evil. Blessed is the man that keeps the Sabbath from polluting it, and keeps his hand from doing any evil. Let's examine two important words used in this verse, pollute and evil. According to the Synonym Finder by J. I. Rodale, copyright 1978, page 910, pollute means the same as corrupt. In the Random House College Dictionary, Revised Edition, copyright 1988, on page 302, corrupt means something that is made inferior by alterations. Alteration means to change. Evil is synonymous to sinful, and sinful is any acts that transgress the laws of Yahweh. According to I John chapter 3, verse 4, which reads, Whosoever committeth sin transgresseth also the law. For sin is the transgression of the law. Thus, blessed is the man that keeps from making the Sabbath inferior by changing it and keeps his hand from transgressing the laws of Yahweh. In Nehemiah chapter 13, verse 17, a very poignant question is asked about the Sabbath day, and it reads in part, What evil thing is this that ye do, and profane the Sabbath day? When we make the Sabbath inferior by changing it, and we transgress the laws of Yahweh, we are in fact profaning the Sabbath day. According to Webster's Ninth New Collegiate Dictionary, copyright 1989, on page 939, profane means not holy because unconsecrated. Unconsecrated means not declared sacred by Yahweh. Sacred is something that is holy. In the Random House College Dictionary, Revised Edition, on page 632, holy means something that is dedicated or devoted to the service of God. Therefore, we profane the Sabbath day when we change the Sabbath day, transgress the laws of Yahweh, and do anything that is not dedicated or devoted to the service of Yahweh. Question. What kinds of things are we doing on the Sabbath that are not dedicated or devoted to the service of God, Yahweh? Nehemiah chapter 10, verse 31 answers this question, and it reads in part, And if the people of the land bring ware or any victuals on the Sabbath day to sell, that we would not buy it of them on the Sabbath or on the holy day. If the people of the land bring ware or any victuals on the Sabbath day to sell, we are not to buy it of them on the Sabbath day or on the holy day. Why? Because they are not things that are dedicated or devoted to the service of God, Yahweh. If we are buying ware or any victuals on the Sabbath day, we are making the Sabbath inferior and are transgressing the laws of Yahweh. 
Now let us understand clearly what where and vittles are. On the authority of Webster's New World Dictionary, third college edition, copyright 1994, on page 1504, where by definition means any piece or kind of goods that a store, merchant, peddler, etc., has to sell. Also, any skill or service that one seeks to sell. On page 1487, vittel means articles of food, especially when prepared for use. On page 78, article means a thing for sale. Even those stores, merchants, peddlers, restaurants, business offices, and the like are open for business to sell their goods, services, or skills on the seventh day, the Sabbath of Yahweh, we are commanded by Yahweh not to buy any of their merchandise, food, skills, or services on His holy day. All these things must be done on the sixth day or in advance of the seventh day, the Sabbath of Yahweh. In conclusion, we are not to change the Sabbath of Yahweh, nor are we to buy any goods or sell any services on the seventh day, the Sabbath of Yahweh, but rather we are to dedicate and devote this day exclusively to reflecting upon the memory of Yahweh for all His work, His creation, which He, Yahweh, created and made. Next week, we shall continue to discuss the Sabbath and its relationship to dress. I bear witness to you today that the Messiah, Yahweh ben Yahweh, is here. I bear witness to you today that the Mahdi is here. I bear witness to you today that Shiloh is here. I bear witness to you today that the great light is here. I bear witness to you today that the Grand Master of the Celestial Lodge, Architect of the Universe, is here. I bear witness to you today that the Enlightened One is here. I bear witness to you today that the one all religions have been speaking of for almost 6,000 years is here. Thank you for listening and join us next week as we continue our discussion of the commandments of Yahweh. What does eternal life mean? Eternal life means life without end. It means forever. Not only during the time of one's natural life, but through endless ages of eternal life and blessedness. To find out more, read The Messiah Revealed by Yahweh Ben Yahweh. To order, call us at 1-800-967-7337 or check out our new website and online bookstore at www.yahwehbenyahweh.com. What is the Tetragrammaton? What are the laws and teachings of Yahweh ben Yahweh? What is the meaning of the crucifixion? What are the laws of the covenant? How can you work to balance justice? How can you hear the voice of Yahweh? Learn the answers to these questions and many more on the internet when you visit the new Yahweh Ben Yahweh website. 
The address is www.yowiebenyowie.com. Everyone is talking about the controversial new television miniseries, Judicial Murder. Let the evidence be heard. Oh yes, I believe everybody across the nation should see this. It's absolutely a conspiracy. These are the devastating facts which you were never, ever supposed to know. Every person, regardless of race, creed, or color, should see this program. Judicial Murder, Let the Evidence Be Heard, can be summed up in one word. Powerful. Phenomenal. Yeah, I think it's fantastic. Is worthy. Who is worthy to open the book? Who is worthy to open the book and loose the seals thereof? And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one likened to the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the foot, and girt about the paps with a golden girdle. His head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire, and his feet like unto fine brass, as if they burned in a furnace, and his voice as the sound of many waters. At the end of time of evil rule, the Anointed One, the Messiah, shall appear. In 1979, Yahweh Ben Yahweh came to Miami and became the spiritual leader and founder of the nation of Yahweh. Although he took a vow of poverty, in seven years he guided the nation to amass a $250 million empire. Under his direction, the nation of Yahweh has grown to encompass disciples, followers, and supporters in over 1,300 cities within the U.S. and 16 foreign countries. Yahweh Ben Yahweh is bringing about changes in the lives of individuals and is giving the world the keys to success in life politically, economically, educationally, socially, and spiritually. The throne of Yahweh Ben Yahweh is forever and ever. The scepter of his kingdom is a right scepter. Yahweh ben Yahweh loves righteousness and hates wickedness. Therefore, Yahweh, his God, has anointed him with the oil of gladness above his fellows. All his garments smell of myrrh and aloes and cassia out of the ivory palaces whereby they have made him glad. King's daughters are among the honorable women of Yahweh ben Yahweh. Upon his right hand will stand queens in gold. Listen, O daughter, we must consider and incline our ear. Forget also our own people and our father's house. So is the king Yahweh ben Yahweh greatly desiring our beauty, for he is our Lord, and we worship him. Psalms chapter 45, verses 6 through 11. Even the rich among the people shall entreat the favor of Yahweh ben Yahweh. The king's daughter is all glorious within. Her clothing is made of gold. She shall be brought unto the king in raiment of needlework. The virgins, her companions, that follow her, shall be brought unto him. With gladness and rejoicing shall they be brought. They shall enter into the king's palace. Instead of his fathers shall be his children, whom he may make princes in all the earth. Yahweh is making his name to be remembered in all generations. Therefore shall the people praise him forever and ever. Psalms chapter 45, 
verses 12 through 17. Remember that this is the morning of the third day, and I shall rise again. I am the resurrection. If all of prophecy tells you that I shall rise again, it's all about that. Luke chapter 2, verse 34. No doubt about it. Again, I love you forever, bless you forever. I remind you once again, my associates are children of the light. <laughs> That just brings uh, laughter to my heart, to my soul, to realize that at last, I have those of you that love peace. And I only want to be in the presence of those of you that love peace. I love you forever. Shalom Aleikum. All moral men shall be blessed in Yahweh bin Yahweh, and all nations shall call him blessed. For Yahweh bin Yahweh is faithful, true-hearted, and incorruptible. He is perfect in all his ways and knows not a wicked person. He is providing for law and justice in the land and is securing for his people the blessings of Yahweh. Therefore, we must praise and glorify his holy and righteous name, the name which shall endure forever. Praise Yahweh bin Yahweh. Thank you for joining us in the universe of Yahweh. And now we'd like to invite all of you to pray with us as we turn to the east with outstretched hands and say a prayer to our Heavenly Father, Yahweh, the Lord's Prayer in Hebrew. Come, let us pray. Tefillah, Ave Nu Shabbat Shemayim, Yikardesh Shemayaka, Tavo Malkuteaka, Yiasevazonka. Ki vashemayim kain ba'aretz, et lekum kukenu, tain la nu hayom, uslak la nu, ah kati enu, ki moshe sol kin, gamanak nu, la koteom la nu, ve'al tefi enu, le de nisayom, kim kal se nu, min hara, kila ka, hamam la ha, ve'ha givera, ve'ha tiferet, le'olame, olamin sila. We thank thee, O Yahweh, O living and eternal King who has so mercifully restored our souls within us, Selah. Praise Yahweh, and always remember that the Father, Yahweh, and His Son, Yahweh bin Yahweh, love you, and your host loves you too. Shalom Aleichem. To order the companion book to the series, The Messiah Revealed, call 1-800-967-PEACE. That's 1-800-967-7337. And when you call, ask about the special discount on a global call to the remnant by Yahweh ben Yahweh. Videos of this program are available. When ordering, please refer to the program number on the screen. You can now access the divine mind of Yahweh ben Yahweh on the internet at the address on the screen.